Hi guys! Um, we are going to be reading in chapter two of my book, Getting Good With Money. I'm actually going to be reading my favorite section um, of this book. I um, And this must be a lot of people's favorite section in the book because every podcast interview that I have done um, about this book, they have asked about this section. So we are going to be reading the four money struggles. So obviously we can have several different types of struggles with money. Um, but I do believe that there are four sort of broad, um, categories when it comes to our struggles around money. And I have been one of these before and I've been all four of them at one time before. So this is definitely not, you know, one of those things that you have to pick one, like this is the struggle that you have and then you don't struggle at all in the, any of the other areas. Um, cause like I said, I have been all four at one time. Um, and I do believe that for most of us, there will be times in our lives where we go back and forth the, between these different types of struggles, um, that, you know, we all sort of have. All right, so this is a chapter two and I'm reading from the four money struggles. When it comes to managing money, our struggles can usually boil down to what's common for four types of people. I know because in my lifetime, I have been all these types more than once. I have also learned from experience that these struggles with money usually happen as a result of the mystery of money. My hope is that after reading about these four types of people, your struggle won't be so much of a mystery because trust me, you're not alone in your struggles. The floater is someone who is caught living the paycheck to paycheck cycle and feels like there is no end in sight. They feel as if every time they make any headway, something pops up and completely derails all the progress they've made. Have you ever heard of Murphy's Law? Murphy's Law states that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. For the floater, it can feel like good old Uncle Murphy has moved in and taken up residence. The biggest struggle for the floater is figuring out how to beat the paycheck to paycheck cycle that feels never ending. The daredevil is someone who has little to no savings. This person may not be caught in the paycheck to paycheck cycle, but they struggle to pay for big expenses without going into debt because of their lack of savings. The reason they're called the daredevil is because they cross the tightrope of life without any life-saving cushion beneath them. Without a, solid without a solid saving strategy in place, any financial fall is potentially fatal. As the expression says, the daredevil is one paycheck away from bankruptcy. If they lose their job or a major life crisis happens, the daredevil will struggle to keep themselves and their family afloat. The spender is someone who struggles with controlling their overspending and impulse buying. Often, the spender is someone who can score amazing deals on things, but uses them to justify spending money they do not have. The mystery, the money mystery for the spender is the why behind their spending. Many spenders are not even aware of how much they are spending every month and what they are spending it on. The avoider is someone who does not plan for their future. The avoider is caught in the grind of everyday life and struggles with saving for retirement and planning for their future self and family. They may, they may have even lost sight of their dreams and their potential. The money mystery for the avoider is seeing how they can realize their dreams by taking small actions today. Many times the avoider has become so bogged down with their everyday lives that they are oblivious to the potential destruction they may be causing their future selves. Maybe you have identified yourself in one of these types or maybe you even see yourself in more than one. When I was struggling with money at age 21, I was all four of them. Yes, it's possible to be all four, but that doesn't mean all hope is lost. If I could overcome these struggles, so can you. However, it is important to identify our personal struggles with money. Once we have identified what they are, they are easier to overcome. And so, like I said, you can be all four of these money struggles. Um, I know for us, because of inflation, um, we have kind of sort of bounced back and forth between this struggle of, well, is our savings enough? Do we have adequate savings to, um, you know, because we have an, a fully funded emergency fund, but with inflation, is it actually enough? Like, is it going to carry us through if God forbid my husband lost his job, um, something happens to him or happens to me, is that emergency fund actually enough? And, um, and this can be hard to sometimes figure out. You have to kind of go with your own comfort level too, because, um, you know, as I said, the emergency fund is totally enough as far as, you know, replacing ex uh, um, covering six months of expenses. Um, if my husband did lose his job, but again, with inflation, is it going to be enough? Um, and you know, obviously living, you know, paycheck to paycheck is very, very hard. Um, you know, I'm grateful that we're no longer in that cycle. Um, but it's also, you know, we're feeling that tightening of the belt again, due to inflation, our grocery budget is significantly higher, um, nearly double what it was last year, um, which is hard for my family and I'm sure it's hard for most families. And so our struggles can sometimes be brought on by our own 
you know, mistakes with money and sometimes it can be external things that we can't control. Um, like I don't set the grocery prices and I don't set gas prices, you know, but you know, I still have to put gas in my car and I still had to put food on the table. Right. And so, um, so sometimes our struggles, maybe you do involve an external component, but my challenge for you for this week, as well as a challenge for myself, um, is to identify your money struggle to really sit down with it and just identify where you are struggling the most when it comes to managing your money. And then I want you to come up with just one action, one action that you can take this week that's going to bring about a positive outcome. Um, it may not be an immediate positive outcome, but just one small action that you can take this week to get you a little bit closer to overcoming that struggle. And so now I'm gonna share something with you that a teacher of mine shared a long time ago when I was younger. Um, you know, a lot of times when we are struggling with something, uh, a lot of negative thoughts come into our head and we can come up with this whole litany of, you know, reasons and excuses as to why we can't do something or why something's not possible. And so that teacher challenged me because I very much so can do that. I'm an Enneagram 8 and sometimes we tend to lean way more towards the negative side of things. And this teacher challenged me they said, you know, what? I don't need all the reasons why you can't do something. Just give me one way that it might be possible. Just, just one way, one way it might be possible. And that sort of changes my thinking whenever I get caught in that downward spiral of like, I can't do this or this is out of my control or whatever it may be. That stops it because it challenges me to find just that one little thing, that one little thing that if I just did this, it would fix everything, right? Um, an example of this could be like if you are running around like a chicken with your head cut off because your kids are in, you know, 15 million different sports this summer and you feel like you are never home and but you're eating out way too much and you're spending too much money there and you're throwing away a bunch of groceries. Maybe one of the th ways that you can challenge yourself is how do I make sure that we can have food, you know, whether we prepare it at home and we bring it to the ball field or we have it sitting in the crock pot. What is something that I can do? to make sure that we have a meal that has been prepared at home to eat every night instead of having to go out to eat. Is that, you know, planning crock pot meals and setting a reminder in your phone to uh, set the crock pot up in the morning before you head off to work or whatever it may be. So your challenge this week is just to find that one thing, that one action that you can do, that you can take that will help you overcome whatever current money struggle that you're struggling with, that'll help you overcome that um, and have a positive outcome for you. Um, okay, so next week we will be in chapter three and after next week we're going to start bouncing around in the book. I'm not just going to keep going in order, um, but the first three chapters I wanted to do in order, but after next week we're going to be bouncing around. So, all right, well, good luck with your money moves and um, leave me a comment uh, on the replay of this. What, um, what maybe your one uh, money move that you're going to make this week that's going to help you overcome whatever money struggle you're currently dealing with.